The female scientist placed an eyelash into the virus sample, then looked at it under an electron microscope. To her shock, the cells on the eyelash started breaking apart completely. She froze in fear. Only by a safety level 4 viruses have such devastating effects on human cells. She immediately suited up in full protective gear and headed to the lab with her assistant. If a virus this powerful were to spread, it could wipe out the entire human population. After careful analysis, they suspected it might be the Ebola virus, which has a fatality rate of up to 90%. The scientist pulled out an Ebola antibody kit, planning to run confirmation tests, but just then, her assistant stared at her suit in horror. She looked down, there was a tear in her protective gear, and worse, it was stained with blood. She quickly hit the emergency lockdown button, then rushed into the decontamination chamber. As she peeled off the suit, she realized the blood was from a small cut on her hand, a wound she had accidentally gotten while chopping vegetables that morning. Still, entering a high-security lab while injured was a serious violation. Her supervisor had no choice but to place her under temporary quarantine. Quarantine. She tried to explain, saying she may have discovered an active strain of Ebola. Her colleague, Peter, pointed out that Ebola had never been found on U.S. soil. The monkey organs they were studying had been sent from the Hazelton Research Facility as samples related to a suspected monkey hemorrhagic fever. That morning, they had only run tests using reagents for generic hemorrhagic viruses. Some colleagues had even smelled the samples out of curiosity. If this really was Ebola, the consequences would be catastrophic. Nancy wanted to go back into the lab and recheck everything but due to the earlier accident. All the samples had already been compromised, with no other choice. Once released from quarantine, Nancy went straight to Hazelton and convinced the staff there to let her take two monkey carcasses. The animals had died after being infected, but the lab manager had no idea how serious the situation was. The bodies had just been kept in a standard freezer. Nancy loaded the monkeys into her car herself, hoping to get them to a secure lab before they defrosted. But when she got back to the institute, she found her access credentials had been revoked. Luckily, Peter showed up up in time. He was just as eager to confirm whether the monkeys carried Ebola. Using his keycard, he unlocked the lab door. They quickly collected fresh tissue samples from the monkeys, then applied Ebola antibodies. The reagent immediately lit up fluorescent green. They were both speechless with fear. And at that moment, a wave of disaster and panic began to spread. 